What is going on everybody? It is the Misfit Bear and welcome to a different kind of video. You know how I recently did the two reactions to Diablo. I am still amazed at how much love both of those videos have gotten. Like I reached, you know, my end of the year goal and it was a goal I set that I didn't even think I would reach. Like at one point in time, you know, when I was bouncing between, you know, numbers over and over and over for weeks and months, I was like, you know, if I don't get it, so be it. But it sucks to put my mind to a goal and not see it succeed. And then it happened and I'm still blown away. Thank every single one of y'all. From the bottom of my heart that showed that video support i love every single one of y'all you have absolutely no idea you know my grizzly knights speaking of which i am wearing my new shirt that will be available in a link in the description below and because of the fact that it's going to be a holiday there will also be a promo code attached to that link, you know, right beside it and whatnot, because holidays are a time for giving, and I have so much love to give back to y'all, you have no idea. But what I'm going to do with this video is I'm going to touch on a subject, multiple subjects, within Diablo 4. If there's one thing that I noticed within a lot of the comments on my reaction to the cinematic trailer, is that I can count on more than one hand how many times I was told, hey, you're the only reactor who knew it was Lilith. More than one hand, that's more than five people, maybe almost 10, I don't even know anymore. But I recently got told that one other person knows, but still, Either way, that is multiple people across this humongous platform we call YouTube, and I guarantee you they're all more popular than me. It is a blessing. Truly a blessing. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to talk about Lilith. I'm going to give some backstory about Lilith. And then we're going to talk about what could be in store for the classes. I don't know if they have anything else already in store, but I felt all of this in my heart, you know? I wanted to talk about it, and I got some good talking points, you know, because there, there are five classes in total that are going to be a part of Diablo 4 by looking at what I read. So, if that's true, mind you, if it's true, there's only going to be two left, but they could add in, you know, a third one, so you never know. It's just talking points in reference to what classes from the previous game, Diablo 3, Diablo 3, Reaper of Soul, and of course, Rise of the Necromancer, what could be brought into Diablo 4 for the next class or two. And then, I want to give my thoughts on the possible plot. So without further ado, let's have a discussion, shall we? First and foremost, Lilith. Who is she? Oh, she's a demon. A demoness, if you will. She's also the daughter of hatred. Daughter of the Lord of Hatred, Dul Mephisto. And she's also the reason for the creation of the Nephilim. Let me explain. See, there was this major war called the Great Conflict. As you've always seen all throughout fantasy, all throughout history, all the way into biblical and religious teachings, there is always a war between the angels and the demons. Well, this war... There are quite a few people who just wanted it to stop. During one of these particular battles, Lilith took captive an angel, took him back to her lair, blase blase. This particular angel eventually began to talk about, oh, I don't want this war anymore. I want it to stop. And then 
she got the craziest idea in her head. Yeah, let's stop it. So Lilith spoke of the world stone. Now this stone has immense power. The one in possession of this stone could literally change reality. It is the kingdom hearts of Diablo in essence. And she decided if we steal it, not only can we be away from the war, but we can be together. And that's what they did. With the help of renegade angels and demons who also no longer wanted to be a part of the great conflict, they stole the world stone and thus created sanctuary. Inarius was like, oh yeah, this peace, it's going to be freaking awesome. And Lilith was like, yeah, so will victory. But there's just one thing we need to do first. And thus, the Nephilim were born. First up, Rathma. Or, as his birth name is, Lenarian. He was the original Nephilim, the first child of a demon and an angel. And all of the other renegade angels and demons were like, whoa, he's stronger than them? Hey, you uh, want to make some half angel, half demon babies? Hell yeah. Let's do it. And thus, the Nephilim as a whole became a people. But eventually, the strength of the children weighed heavy on the minds of the parents. A lot of Inarius' renegades were like, so, you know how we initially thought that them being stronger than us was cool? Yeah, won't that cause a problem for us? Don't you think that they might not try to, you know, overthrow us, you know, like a gods and a titans kind of thing? Yeah, I think we need to kill them. That mistake, that one thought, proved to be their downfall. Because Lilith, Big Mama, she wasn't having it. She was like, they are our future. To hell with all of you. Quite literally, because she changed into a ghastly true form and literally mopped all of Inarius's renegades. The whole squad got mopped. But poor Inarius, he couldn't kill baby girl. So he banished her from sanctuary to what is called the Void. I mean, the name is kind of self-explanatory. But then what he did was he went to the World Stone and put a spell on it that would deteriorate the strength of the Nephilim as the generations went by. And thus, humankind came into existence. But that's roughly a pretty good backstory. Now I want to move on to talking about the classes that could possibly be making a show in Diablo 4. So we already have the gameplay of three classes, the Barbarian, the Sorcerer, <laughs> and the Druid. Now if we're taking into consideration if there are only five slots for characters, then they only have two to fill. Let's go over what the possibilities could be. In my opinion, there has to be a crusader. Like, you can't have demons in a game without some kind of holy warrior. Granted, the crusader didn't become a thing until Reaper of Souls, but either way, it still makes sense. If they don't put in the Crusader, I'm gonna be shocked. But I will understand. 
I mean, the Crusader was a tank in its own right. But it had the support skills and the, the, you know, I think it could heal as well and everything like that. So it would be a good character to have. However, when you look at the Druid, you kind of have the same thing. I don't know if the Druid is going to have any support style, you know, healing powers and stuff like that, which would make sense for a Druid to have. But if they didn't want to bring in the Crusader, they wouldn't need to. If they supplemented the Druid with the proper abilities to compensate, then it wouldn't necessarily be no harm, no foul. Hell, if they really wanted to, they could give the Druid an ability to where they like transform and run with increased speed, you know, kind of like the Crusader's horse. However, if they're going to do that, I just hope they remember the three second delay if you were playing with somebody else and you literally sat running off screen for two to three seconds waiting for your partner to bamf to you. I have been a part of this, and I was the one on the horse. Trust me, that needs to be fixed. Plus, you fought with a Templar in Reaper of Souls. And one of the last few lines of that Templar, he said that he was going to go around, find other Templars, tell them where they did wrong, because the Templar order was corrupted by, you guessed it, Mephisto, who is the father of our blessed revived mother. Does anybody smell a coincidence? Because I kind of do, and it smells like bacon. The monk was available in the base game. If you want a DPS, that's a solid option. Now that I think about it, that was quite possibly one of the only options. I mean, I considered the barbarian to be a tank. Duh. But as far as melee DPS, the monk, that was damn near the only option. So monk would be pretty solid. The demon hunter, now this is going to be me just rambling on. But I look at the demon hunter and you might as well have a gunslinger. Because that was damn near what the Demon Hunter was. I mean, fully automatic hand crossbows. They might as well be pistols. I mean, come on now. Think about that. Plus, on top of that, yeah, it was a dex-based character, a class. And it had traps and all that stuff to kind of slow down the opponent. But outside of a couple of rolls, it really didn't have anything close quarters. And if you managed to roll yourself into a corner, yeah, you could get overwhelmed pretty damn fast. At least with a gunslinger, you could get away with an explosive, like a bomb or something. So if you're going to bring in a ranged DPS, at least come up with something that has a better close quarter option instead of just ducking and dodging out of the way. But that's my opinion. The witch doctor, you might as well ax that. You might as well. Because the primary thing that I saw with the witch doctor was a lot of summoning. You don't necessarily need summons anymore because of the druid. Like the druid, you know, we, we all know who the, the druid is. The druid is going to have wolves with them at all times. The druid will be able to summon crows and all of that stuff. That's literally what the druid did, was do a lot of summoning. So the witch doctor, we really don't need Tia Dalma. She can go and have a seat. And then there is the necromancer. Now I've seen some of the tweets on the, you know, Diablo Twitter, where some people are saying, hey, just give us the necromancer. I'm on the fence about it. Not because the necromancer wasn't a good class. Trust me, it was. Trust me, it was. If I do end up 
getting back into it and playing Diablo 3 on the channel, let me know in the comments if you would like to see that, I would be playing a Necromancer because I loved the Necromancer. The Necromancer was cool as hell. But just hear me out, okay? It's because of this man. A couple of people in the comments that I've seen have said that this man is Rathma. Now, while I could believe it, there are a couple of things that would not be good for a necromancer class. Number one, Rathma is the OG necromancer. Like he started all of it, learned the balance and everything. He taught it, he had his own priests. The priests of Rathma were what they were actually called. It was just the public that started calling them necromancers. And just think about it. If that is Rathma, and if he did play a role in the revival of Lilith, which obviously he did, don't you think that he will possibly be a boss? And if that's the case, why would a priest of Rathma go against Rathma? It just doesn't make sense. However, there is something that supports him being Rathma. And it's because of this guy. Yep. The guy that was left to die by Tweedledee and Tweedle Dickhead. Came back with a vengeance and just snap crackled. Yeah, you know the rest. But what solidifies him being Rathma is this guy. Yep. The same... He was asked a question by Tweedledee and he just brushed it off like it was nothing. He reset his what should have been missing lower jaw and just Jedi that asshole. And then he became Mr. Gimme That Robe. It would explain how he's able to manipulate the body. I don't know why he would need the body, but hey, when you have a robe like that, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Hell, I was even thinking about a rogue character. Now, it may seem like a corny idea. When I thought about it originally, it did. But when I got to really thinking about it, this could be a thing. Let me explain. Number one, the rogue was in Diablo 1. I had completely forgot, but I actually just looked it up and come to find out it was. So was the Amazon, all of those other old school classes. But then when it really, really got down to it, it's like, if we're talking about five characters, wouldn't it just make sense to just make a solid DPS character? I mean, think about it. You have the monk. Okay, that's melee DPS. You get rid of the staff and you replace the fist items with daggers. Dual daggers. Then you take the demon hunter. You take away the machine gun crossbows and you just keep the bow. You put them together and then boom, you have the rogue. You have a fully fledged DPS class that can do melee DPS as well as ranged DPS. And just think of the builds. We have poison builds. We have bleed builds, especially. I see two top tier builds just in that alone. Plus on top of that, if they could come up with an ability that would allow you to like vanish from sight, like throw down a smoke screen or become invisible or something like that, then you got critical. And everybody loves a good critical build because critical builds are the one hitter quitter of RPGs. But then that would come a little difficult in a boss fight because I mean, if any of you played Diablo 3, look at Malthael. Malthael was relentless 
Like he was always following you no matter where you went. So that would be a little difficult, but at the same time, it's not impossible. It would just be stat dependent. Like it could be dex dependent on how easily you could slip away and the, the difficulty could be increased during a boss fight. But if you have more than one person, or you're playing with three or four people in total, then you have the concept of aggro, then it gets a little confusing there. But at the same time, that would be a solid DPS class. I mean, I'm hyped just for the idea. We need to get this to Blizzard so we can make this shit happen because I support it 100%. Outside of other classes, I can't really think of much else, you know? I can't think of much else that could fit the bill. You know, I mean, they could throw in the Amazon for DPS, but then who's going to be ranged? You know, then they'd have to have a, a solid ranged only build. I mean, if they really wanted to, they could use the Amazon to replace the Crusader because of the aspect of the defense and the shield. But hey, like I said, this is all speculation coming out of my imagination. Bars. Let's talk about the plot. <laughs> Now, even though Lilith was sealed by Inarius, she still got out. And then she socked it to him and reversed what he did. So the Nephilim would eventually get their power back. I mean, it's kind of apparent because in Diablo 3, you're able to take down lesser evils. You're able to take down prime evils. Some of the angels never even were able to do that. So it could already be apparent for that change to have happened come that time. Maybe even in Diablo 2. I don't fully remember where each part fits in the lore in reference to the games. But either way, there is proof that the Nephilim is gaining in power. I don't even remember if you even played as a Nephilim in Diablo 2. Y'all let me know. Y'all let me know what I'm missing or if I'm getting anything wrong because I'm not trying to sit here looking dumb. But eventually, some of the humans began to summon demons because, you know, some of them decided to go to the dark side of the force. And then the Primes, the three bigwigs, knew of Sanctuary. And, uh, <laughs> that was a rough time. More fighting. And then our boy, Anarius, was captured again by, you guessed it, Big Daddy Demon Mephistbro. And not to mention that, but he was also tortured. He had his wings yanked off. His skin was torn asunder by hooks. He was put in a room of mirrors. The worst thing of all, Mephisto cut out his daggum eyelids so that for eternity, he can just stare at what he's become. I feel really bad for the guy. I really do. Because at the end of the day, he just wanted peace. He didn't want this war. He didn't want the great conflict. He just wanted to kick back with his feet up with this fine demoness right here. And then he lost everything. Quite literally. His life is a living hell. And according to the lore, it still is. As far as the lore on Inarius is concerned, he's still down there. So Inarius definitely has to be a part of Diablo 4. I mean, think about this, okay? How crazy would it be for Inarius to somehow escape 
or you're in the burning hells in a stage uh, or whatever, an act, and then you fight him and he's gone completely mad because of the torture and the pain and having to look through it all. We don't know how long he's been down there. We would not know how long he has suffered, but it would be enough to drive him crazy. And I can honestly say I could stand by a mission to put him out of his misery because I, I would want to, I would hate to go through that. I would, but back to Lilith, she did speak of victory being a thing, being assured before they brown chicken brown cowed. But she went to the world stone and reversed what Anarius did for a reason. My guess is that she's going to try to end the great conflict using the Nephilim. Because, I mean, think about it. If the Nephilim get back to their prime power like they were in the very beginning, ain't nobody gonna stand a chance. Plus, if you played Reaper of Souls, you get to see Malthiel do a pretty big oopsie. He cut the Black Soul Stone during the fight with you, and he absorbed all of the primes and the lesser evils that were sealed within. Well, when you destroyed him, quote unquote destroy, it released them all. So not only do we have Lilith and possibly Rathma, but we have a whole cast of people that we could possibly fight, dating from the first game on. I am super psyched. You have no idea. But in the end, it's all speculation, and it's coming from my imagination. Bars, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. If you have anything to add, leave a comment down below. If you're interested in seeing me play Diablo 3, let me know. It's something I've been thinking about doing. So, hey, feedback, I love it. Until next time, I appreciate all of you for watching. Like and subscribe for more, for I will continue to make these videos for many moons. Stay safe out there, and never forget, to holla at your bear. Peace out.